You're about to be entertained by some of the biggest names in show business. For the next hour and 30 minutes, this program will present in person such bright stars as... Uh, Louis Calhoun, Jack Carter, Florence Desmond, Jimmy Durante, Martha Ray, Fran Warren, Meredith Wilson, and my name, darlings, is Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> National Broadcasting Company presents The Big Show. So is in America, the curtains of America. We're going to be a parlor full of stars. The Big Show, 90 minutes with the most scintillating personalities in the entertainment world. Brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at the same time as the Sunday feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And here is your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> well, darling, these Sundays are really getting to be a struggle. In the first place, the rehearsals on this show are called by a director who I'm sure is despises me. He deliberately created a new hour of the day, which he calls 10 a.m. <laughs> Have you ever heard of it, darlings? Of course not. How could you? And he tried to tell me it was quite popular. Ghastly. Well, to give you an idea of what I have to go through to get here on time, I brought today's page for my appointment calendar. Now, you listen to this. 7 a.m., open eyes. <laughs> 7.01, to close them again for five minutes more sleep. 9.30 a.m., open eyes. 9.35, smoke a hearty breakfast. 9.45, shave. Shave? Oh, yes, that impossible person in the next apartment with that revolting electric razor every morning at the same time. And I just know she does it to annoy me. <laughs> Probably a television actress. <laughs> Ten o'clock rehearsal. A 10.30 open eyes. Well, you can close them to Lou. Jimmy <laughs> Durant. <laughs> Jimmy, darling, you look very nice today. And why not? I woke up on the right side of my nose. <laughs> well, that's quite a feat. They were there, too. <laughs> you know, Tulu, it's my daily routine that keeps me so beautiful. Every morning when I get up at the Astor Hotel, I steps over to the window and open. There's Broadway. I inhale. Where's Broadway? <laughs> I, uh... Exhale. <laughs> that's what I do when I'm looking for the lines. I exhale. <laughs> I exhale, there's Broadway. <laughs> inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Yes, Daddy, yes. No wonder the streets are all torn up. <laughs> Every morning I take off my pajamas, shocking pink. The pajamas, not me. And I slip into my dressing gown, lavender blue, not the dressing gown, me. It's a genuine imported raglan sleeve, a Chinese silk dressing gown that grows on you. The silkworms refuse to lay off. They're still working on it? That's right. Toulouse, strong union. <laughs> they should hang by the rope who wrote that. <laughs> then I take four giant steps to the shower. When I want hot water, I turn down the cold water. When I want the cold water, I turn on the hot water. First time I ever saw a tub with cross-eyed faucets. <laughs> now, Jimmy, how can you stand there with a straight face and... <laughs> I... <laughs> chilu, chilu. I admit with my equipment, it's hard to do. Now, after my shower, I put on my custom-made underwear. The kind that never wears out. I know, darling. Strong union suits. <laughs> that one crept up on me. Well, creep on with your story, Jimmy. You're in your underwear. Get going. Where can I go in my underwear? 
Well, Jimmy, I wish you'd come back to the subject. I'm so confused. You know how busy my Sundays are. I find it difficult to keep track of what's going on. Lucky for you, I'm here, Tillou. What you need on this show is a junior mistress of ceremonies, and that's me. Ha <laughs> ha, look, junior miss, this is a big job. You have to handle such great stars as Malena Dietrich, Ethel Merman, Gloria Swanson. I can handle them. And such great stars as Ezio Pinza, Charles Boyer, Clifton Webb. You handle who you like, I'll handle who I like. <laughs> but, Jimmy, I don't think you're right for the job. Of course I'm right. You've got high-class stars. You need a high-class character like myself to introduce them. I'm the equal of those big stars. Maybe more equal because... Now, nobody snubs the Rammy Unless they don't understand Just what high-class stuff is all about My heritage is not well known And high society Should pay attention While I let the news get out Some people boast about how old their family is Well, I want to tell you something my family is so old, it's been condemned. <laughs> You've heard of Henry VIII and good old Louis XIV? I'll inform you of my title. And please, folks, no applause. I'm James V, descendant from a long line of the Rannies. How do you do? I'm James the Fifth, the idol of my uncle and my Annie. And how are you? Why, well, there's a lot of James in history. Look back through your courses. There's Jesse James, home James, and James don't spare the horses. I'm James the Fifth. When I walk in, I'll get a royal greeting. Oh, what a meeting. They should appreciate my position and my brain. Not that I'm big. Why at any function, I'm a hip. Always eating olives and swallowing the pit. I'm James the Fit. So let's have no laughter. I was named after a fifth of champagne. You know, my title gives me a social position. I'm forced to uphold. Nobody outsnubs the ran. If someone looks down his nose at me, I look down my nose at him. Notre Dame playing PS-22. <laughs> I don't want to put on airs. The Durannies always had two swimming pools. One for swimming and one for rinsing off. <laughs> they snuck that one in on me. <laughs> Why, the Durannies were famous before Fulton invented the fish market. Durannies were popular before Edison invented the electric bill. The Rannies were distinguished before Washington invented the cherry tree. My family goes back so far, not only can I tell you all about Adam, I can also tell you about Eve. <laughs> yes, I'm James the Fifth, so let's have no laughter, cause I was named after a fifth of champagne. Yes, sir, a fifth of champagne. As always, the incomparable Jimmy Durante. Thank you, Chalu. May I return the compliment and say that I think you're incomba... Uh, you're incom... You're incompatible, too? <laughs> well, Chalu, when do we start mastering the ceremony? Hello, Chalu. Brad Warren. Brad, darling. Brad, what are you going to sing for us? Well, I thought I'd sing... Stop the music. Hold the dialogue. If I'm the assistant MC, I gotta check the routine. You mean you take care of all the engagements on the show, Jimmy? And the weddings, too. <laughs> now, let me see where I put you down on the list. Oh, if I only had a pair of glasses that could read. <laughs> oh, here it is D. Jimmy, D for Warren. D for Dahl. <laughs> I got a million of a million. <laughs> see you later, Tillou. D for Dahl. Ah, Durrani, you're the new glamorous and unpresentable Tallulah Bonkite. <laughs> Guess what? What are you going to sing, Fred? I had my picture in parade, 
The Sunday Picture Magazine. Oh, that's an odd title for a song. No, Tallulah. Parade is a news magazine. It had a picture of me last week. You've heard of Parade. Heard of it? Darling, I am Parade. <laughs> What's your song, Fran? Till I Met You. Oh, yes. Meredith Wilson's new and lovely ballad that has blossomed into such a big hit. Hit, Meredith Wilson, if you please, darling. <laughs> This week, with proper pride, Metro Golden Mayor premieres at Radio City Music Hall in New York. Its newest, and most certainly one of its finest moving pictures, The Magnificent Yankee. We on the big show, darlings, are happy to share this pride. For we feel that here is a picture that every American must see, must delight in, must learn from. We are proud, too, tonight, that we can premiere a portion of this picture and welcome its star, Mr. Louis Calhoun.
Mr. Calhoun gives us a brilliant portrayal of a man who, after more than three quarters of a century of service to his country, could find no worthier beneficiary for his entire fortune than to name sole heir to his last will and testament the nation he fought and lived for, for these our own United States of America. Here is Mr. Louis Calhoun in his fine portrayal of Mr. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, a scene for MGM's great new picture, The Magnificent Yankee. From the time Oliver Wendell Holmes first came to Washington from Boston to assume his place as an associate justice of the United States Supreme Court, the magnificent Yankee was responsible for three famous institutions, his world-famed dissenting opinions, his fatherly regard for the annual succession of bright young secretaries sent him by Harvard Law School, and his unswerving love and devotion to his wife, Fanny. Our scene opens in the Washington home of Oliver Wendell Holmes on Sunday evening in March, 1921. His wife, Fanny, wearing her 80 years as gracefully as the judge, yet portraying an air of suppressed excitement, lends him a hand with his white tie. You know, the man who invented the bullseye mirror ought to be fried in Hades. Hold still, Wendell. I'll fix your time. Woman, we've been dining out at pothouses for a good many years without all this fuss and feathers. Why do I have to get myself up in this tailcoat and boiled shirt? Why, darling, didn't I explain? You're 80 years young today, and I'm going to show you off before someone else thinks of it. (laughs) You don't mind, do you? Woman, you're a dangerous and beautiful creature. Mm, That's what you say to every pretty woman you meet. That's perfectly true, but with the rest of them, I never mean it. Now, don't keep me waiting. Oh, oh, there's one thing more. Yes, the Lord. I do not wish to take you out under false pretenses. I want you to know that I do not feel 80. Well, I should hope not. I certainly should hope not. (laughs) Well, I'll wait for you in the library. Well, Drake, my secretaries don't work Sunday nights. What brings you back at this hour? Oh, uh... Well, I, I was just passing, sir, and uh, I suddenly remembered these papers. I, I meant to bring them over this afternoon. Oh, that's all right, my boy. Everything in order? Yes, sir. Well, good evening, sir. Uh, hold on there. Where are you off to all tugged out like this? Some woman got you in tow, too. <laughs> oh, no, sir. I'm uh, I'm just on my way to a little party with some of the boys. Huh? Lucky dog. Yes, sir. <laughs> good evening, sir. Another of my sons. Ready, my dear? Great heavens, woman. How on earth did you get in here without my hearing you? Oh, it's nothing. Just a little trick I've been saving up for your birthday. All the New England witches knew how to do it. You are a witch, you know. The loveliest it ever was. Come along now. Let's get out of here before I make a fool of myself over you. In my own house, too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Justice. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, sir. Well, I'll be blowed. The chain gang. Every one of my secretaries since the beginning, one for every year since I've been in Washington, all 20 of you, eh? And you've come down here from all over the country just to watch an old man turn 80. Well, I... I don't quite know what to say, except uh, thank you. Thank you, my sons. Look here, Fanny, you're to blame for this. Sure. Is that all you can say on an occasion like this? Speech, speech. Speech, speech. (laughs) All right. But if I don't come up to expectations, remember, you asked for it. When I was a boy, I was better at this kind of thing. I had to be, whether I liked it or not, because my father always liked to have witty people about him, especially at the breakfast table. So if I said anything good, father made sure that I got an extra helping of marmalade. I have not been able to face that darn stuff ever since. 
But if ever a man wanted to earn a bit of marmalade, I do tonight. You've been pretty good boys, you know. Some of you have turned out to be pretty important pumpkins, and I couldn't be prouder of you if you were my own sons. <laughs> well, you are, you know. You, you are my sons in a way. You're my sons at law, you might say. <laughs> eh? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, even my father couldn't have inflicted a worse pun than that. Oh, I wish I had something special to pass on to you fellows at a time like this. I will say this. I have always had the idea that when I got to be four score, I could wrap my life up in a scroll, tie a pink ribbon round it, put it away in a drawer, and go around doing the things that I always wanted to do. But I'm just beginning to see, once more, that the good fight is never over. When you've taken one trench, there's always a new firing line just beyond. And that's as it should be. Don't ask me why. All I know is a man must go on, charting his course by stars he has never seen, must keep searching with a divining rod for springs he may never reach. Because, uh, uh, well, that, that's enough of this preaching. Fanny, how are we going to cheer these fellows now that Mr. Volstead's moral tornado has become the law of the land? It's all arranged. The champagne is cooling downstairs. Oh, it's all very legal. We've had it for years. Very well. Gentlemen, in that case, we'll drink to the United States of America. And a new firing line. Yeah. Yeah. And it's next, Chief Justice... Oliver Wendell Holmes. Uh, sorry to disappoint you, boys. White is retiring, but the president wants a conservative, and I think Taft will be the man. I'm old. Besides, I never did understand ambition for high office. Oh, it's not to be despised if it comes your way. But the real challenge of life is to try to touch the superlative entirely on your own. No outsider can help you. The uh, approval of friends is welcome. It gives you confidence. It gives you hope. But don't you youngsters hope for the wrong thing. Fanny, do we get anything to go with that champagne or do we forage in the neighborhood for our supper? Silly, we have a wonderful buffet all ready downstairs. And a wonderful cake, too, with 81 candles. What's the extra one for? That, my dear, is for you to grow on. <laughs> go along, children. I'm hungry. And you, I know, are thirsty. <laughs> Wendell. Hmm? Oh, coming, my dear, coming. Wendell, it doesn't really matter, does it, about being Chief Justice? No, not really. But just for a moment, I, I caught something in the boys' eyes, you know. They, they might have liked it. Fanny, I felt like a father who had let his sons down. Well, they're not my sons. They're just a fresh lot of young scamps from Harvard. Listen to them now, drinking my liquor and singing about how good it is to rejoice when you're young. But they don't know, Fanny. The real trick is to rejoice when you're 80. <laughs> Fanny, what the devil am I talking about anyway? I'm sure I don't know, Wendell. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Well, let's go down, my dear, and join our sons. Louis, Louis, that was beautiful. Thank you. 
Louis Callahan, come over here with me, darling. How are you, sweetie? L- Louis, stop bowing. Oh, hello, hello, Tallulah. Hello, darling. Of all the great stars who have appeared on this program... Yes, Tallulah. You are the tallest. <laughs> no, no, I was just joking. No, darling, you really were superb in that excerpt from the magnificent southerner. The magnificent Yankee. There is no such thing as a magnificent Yankee. <laughs> Surely there must be some good Yankees. The only magnificent Yankee I can think of is Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> and I wish he were a magnificent giant. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Tallulah, darling, you are a magnificent woman. Even though uh, you are standing in front of me again. Uh-huh. You never used to mind that in the old days, Louis. Well, darling, in the old days you could stand in front of me and the audience could still see me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Forgive me, Louis. A performer must never stand in front of another performer during a scene. I should know that. After all, I've been in the theater as far back as I can remember. And as far back as anybody can remember, darling. <laughs> well, uh, Louis, dear, do come back and be on the show again with us next Monday, won't you, pet? Would you do the show on Sunday? Yes, darling. <laughs> You're the same old Tallulah. Older. <laughs> Oh, Louis, I'm not going to stand here paring words with you. You are, after all, one of the theater's most accomplished actors. I don't care what anyone says. What do you mean by that? Well, you know how actors talk around Sardis. I mean, really ridiculous, darling. I mean, someone referring to you as the road company Basil Rathbone. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, I know that you're above paying any attention to that kind of, a, you know, small talk. Why, of course I am, just as I know you are when they refer to you as the road company. Well, you can! Uh, excuse me, Tillou. Yes, uh, Jimmy. I understand Louis Callahan is on this show. That's right, Jim. Have you met our guest? Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mr. Radbone. <laughs> Tillou, when this Callahan bum gets here. Jimmy, 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 this is Mr. Calhoun, the Mr. Calhoun, who is starring on Broadway now in King Lear, one of Shakespeare's greatest tragedies. The story of children's ingratitude towards a father who was willing to give them each not only his love and paternal affection, but all his worldly goods, only to have them turn him out of the house and drive him into the forest where he loses his mind and finally dies a broken, pitiful figure. That sounds like my favorite radio program. Life can be beautiful. <laughs> You have been listening to Meredith Wilson in the big show Oxen Chorus, and now I'd like to ring my chime. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is the National Broadcasting Company, Sunday Extravaganza, with the most scintillating personalities in show business. The Big Show, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival, is brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by the makers of Anison, for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by your local Buick dealer, who introduces the new 1951 Buick this coming Saturday, January 20th. Don't miss seeing the new 51 Buick. The big stars on this program are Louis Calhern, Jack Carter, Florence Desmond, Jimmy Durante, Martha Ray, Fran Warren, Meredith Wilson and the Big Show Orchestra and Chorus, and every week, your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, darling, this is the big show, to which every week two or three hundred of the biggest names in show business listen. <laughs> you thought I was going to say they were on the show, didn't you, darlings? I fooled you. <laughs> well, the funny thing is that many performers, most of them my friends, do listen to the show. And why not? It's the only chance they ever get to turn me off when I'm talking. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, who plays Tallulah Bankhead around here? Oh, I do, darling. And I imagine you're the poor little man who plays Jack Carter. So this is radio. Me, I'm a television boy. When I come on stage, they can see me. In radio, I'm just a voice without a body. Jack, that's radio. It happens to everybody. I'm just a voice without a body. Honey, with your voice, you don't need a body. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Don't thank me, Chalou. Chalou's Bankhead has become a national institution. Why, you're the Hopalong Cassidy of radio. <laughs> I'm fluttered. I think. Hopalong Cassidy. What program is she mistress of ceremonies on? Now, it's a new thing now. Why, when kids come into my house now, they pull out their guns and they go, uh, Darling. <laughs> Oh, that's what they're doing. Uh, oh. Believe me, the whole town is Tallulah crazy. My wife is taking cold shots on account of you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't you have a bad cold? What are you talking about? She's trying to catch a cold so she'll sound more like you. <laughs> well, it is gratifying to know that your wife is a fan. Not only my wife, Tallulah. I walked by the 6th Avenue Delicatessen the other day, and the smoke tongue in the window was singing, Give my regards to Broadway. <laughs> a voice without a body again. <laughs> I went into my favorite restaurant and they have a Tallulah sandwich, named after you. Uh, no coaching, please. Uh, what kind of a sandwich is it? A triple-decker, naturally. Oh, naturally. The Tallulah sandwich. Plenty of ham, a big tomato. And plenty of lettuce, darling. <laughs> you know, Tallulah, the funniest thing is that right across the street in this restaurant is another restaurant that's copying your sandwich. Of course, it's not as good. Smaller ham, smaller tomato, and plenty of crust. Don't you dare mention her sandwich on this program! <laughs> now, look. Here's the point of the whole conversation. Oh, there is a point. Oh, yes. I admire you, Tallulah. Now, how do I get to be like you? Oh, my darling, you couldn't get to be like me if you lived to be a hundred years old. <laughs> oh, I don't... I don't... I want to be as talented as you are, not as old as you are. <laughs> you keep that up, Buster, and you'll never get to be as old as... Oh! <laughs> I'll probably never get to be as old as you are if I have another year like 1950. Of <laughs> course, I can't complain. 1950 was swell to me. I got my own show on television on NBC Saturday night. I love television. How else can you get into Betty Grable's home once a week, huh? <laughs> well, it really is hard work. But 1950, looking back, was a wonderful year. So many things happened. Brooklyn lost the pennant again. Margaret hit a wrong note, so Harry sent one. You know. <laughs> Plus, they had the new bathing suit in 1950 called the bikini, spelled backwards as Ibn Ibnik. And, uh... Oh, have you seen them? I saw one girl on the beach. Why, they're just two handkerchiefs and a prayer, that's all. One girl had one on, and all the fellows were standing around fanning it with newspapers, trying to make her sneeze. Uh, I was just hanging around to say Gesundheit. And I noticed that, that all the women drivers are out this year like mad. I love those dolls. They get in the car, and they get a look in their eye like, you shouldn't be living anymore. I don't mind the way women drive. It's the way they aim that bothers me. They come over from Jersey, they don't even wait till they get to the tunnel. Right over the water they go. And they make it, too. That's what bothers me. Of course, Durandy is afraid of women drivers. Anytime he's out in his car, sees a woman driver coming toward him. Last time he did, he saw a woman. He ran out of his car, jumped into a building, went up the sixth floor, ran into a house, hid under the bed. It didn't help. She got him anyway. <laughs> traffic. Too much traffic. Too many people. Where are the cops? Traffic. Too much traffic. Too many stoplights. Too many stops, autos crawling down the avenue, take too long to get where they're going. People waiting for the signal to get away from the horns that are blowing. Why, it's crowded, who allowed it? Can't we stop this jamboree? Cause there's much too many and too many much traffic for me. Going uptown, going downtown. It's a one-way street, turn around, retreat. Hey, you think driving is a cinch? Brother, I ain't even moved an inch. Hey, look out, Mac, go faster. Look out for that roadmaster. Look out, roadmaster, look out! I am the new Buick Roadmaster. <laughs> 1951. 
I'm lovely, I'm engaged, I use grease. <laughs> and just listen to my horn. Specially arranged for the convertible by Meredith Wilson. <laughs> Naturally, everything about me is the best. I have mink seat covers, and everybody in me is always gay and laughing. Either rich people are happy or those mink seats tickle, I don't know. And of course, my owner is a wealthy boy, Terence Cartwright. Very wealthy, he has the pie concession on the Milton Berle show. And last week, you know, Terence was out with a debutante. He was driving in me, and he was riding with one arm, and he leaned over to kiss her. All of a sudden, I went off the road. I smashed into an embankment. I went up a tree. I turned over six times. I crashed under the road. She called out of the car, and she said, Brother, that's what I call a kiss. Mm. <laughs> but my days are numbered. I'm being sold to a used car dealer. You see, uh, my ashtrays are full. Traffic? Too much traffic. Hear that blaring? It's not Fred Warren. Why, hear that screeching, someone's teaching, someone had a drive. Why, the pupils spouting, pupils shouting, glory, she's alive. Well, one thing, I'm not going to fidget. Look out for that midget. Look out for that midget car. Hey, look out, midget, midget. I'm just a little midget auto. At night, they don't keep me in a garage. They throw a tablecloth over me and I play canasta. Oh, it's so embarrassing. You won't believe this, but pedestrians hit me. The other day, some kids set fire to my roof. The fireman wouldn't put me out. They thought I was an old cigarette lighter. Oh, I tell you, it's awful. I have my good points, though. I'm a convertible. I wasn't always, you know, but my owner found a can opener. Those trucks are always driving right over me. Well, I gotta be moving now. Their light just changed. Can't seem to move. Oh, no wonder. There's chewing. I'm stuck under my tire. Traffic. Too much traffic. Too much bumping. Too much thumping. Hey, maybe walking is faster. Well, I think I'll take a stab. Hey, look around for the cab. Hey, taxi, look out, taxi. Watch it, taxi. Look out, taxi. Ow! I'm a taxi. Jack the hack. I'm not lovely, I'm not engaged. I'm hard to get, especially when it's raining. <laughs> I guess you think I'm stupid, don't you? You know why I talk funny? My boss has got those baby shoes hanging in a windshield. All day long, I keep getting kicked in the head all day long. <laughs> I'm a pretty fair guy. If I hit a pedestrian, if I drag him six blocks, I only charge him what it says on the meter. <laughs> oh, I got all the latest equipment, you know. I got smoke rear view mirrors. They weren't that way original, but the, uh, the couples in the back seat steamed them up, you know. Yeah, I'm a pretty tough guy. If I see a bus coming, I cut him right off. I see another car, I grind the spinners in half. I knock off trolleys. There's only one thing a taxi has to look out for. <laughs> That's another taxi. <laughs> Traffic! Too much traffic. Can't they stop this jamboree? Cause there's much too many, too many much traffic for me. Look out! Here's a word from RCA Victor. Inch for inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. Yes, a great many American families have taken this advice to heart and bought the thrilling RCA Victor 19-inch console. Truly the most exciting buy in television. So when you set out for your RCA Victor dealers to become an RCA Victor million-proof television set owner, remember that the set you choose will be the very hub of your home for years to come. It'll be the source of a great many hours of exciting home entertainment. So, with this in mind, select the model you really want most, and chances are that model will be the kingly RCA Victor 19-inch console. Inch for inch, your best buy in television. Your 19-inch set will give you, in a great big way, all the matchless, million-proof qualities of sight and sound possible only to the world leader in electronics. Yes, inch for inch, your best buy in television is indeed RCA Victor 19-inch. And with it, go wishes to you and your family for all the warmth and good cheer of Minion Proof Television by RCA Victor. Darlings, every once in a while, show business is enhanced by the success of a performer whose talent is so distinctive, so utterly enchanting, that is almost impossible to describe without hearing and seeing. Such a gifted personality is a dear, dear friend of mine who just came over from England and is currently amusing after-dark pleasure seekers at the Swanky Versailles nightclub here in New York. One of the world's outstanding mimics, Miss Florence Desmond. Florence, darling. <laughs> Hello, Tallulah. Oh, Florence, my pet, how good to see you again. 
Oh, darling, how long has it been since you and I spent that wonderful weekend together when I was staying in London, you remember? And I rented that uh, picturesque old English castle. Oh, it's been quite some time, Tallulah. But that wasn't a castle you were living in. I seem to remember. Well, darling, it seemed like a castle, all those huge rooms. I, I bet there must have been about 40 rooms. I seem to remember five. A five-room castle, don't be ridiculous. I think the castle was next to the place you rented. Wasn't it the um, gamekeeper's cottage with the five rooms? It had six rooms. <laughs> you're mistaken, Tallulah. Five. Well, if you're not going to count that other room. <laughs> well, I, uh, I do remember a party we gave. And you remember you entertained us with that, uh, oh, your wonderful impression of that uh, English general. Oh, I adored it. It was an English colonel, dear. Oh, uh, whoever it was, I adored it. <laughs> I don't know why, Tallulah. I seem to remember you left for the theater to do your play before I did it. Well, if you ever do do it, I'm sure I will adore it. Uh, why don't you do it now, won't you? Why does everybody pick on me on this program? I don't know how you've ever thought whether a, a perfectly good song can be ruined in the hands of the wrong people. But I got a crazy idea the other day, and I tried to imagine an old English army colonel doing the St. Louis blues. And I hate to see the evening sun go down. I hate to see the evening sun go down any time, really. That's when I start drinking. And it's bad for me. For instance, last night we, we had a whale of a party in the mess. It was a farewell to young Carew. He'd been cashiered out of the army. Bad show. Oh, if I feel tomorrow anything like I feel today, heaven help the army. I should think if Peru feels tomorrow anything like he feels today, he'll probably blow his brains out. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea at that. The best thing that boy can do is to pack his bags and make his getaway. It all started with a woman, an attractive little widow with dyed hair. <laughs> we all knew it, all except Peru. It was her birthday, and he asked her what she wanted. Oh, instead of replying like, like any normal woman and saying, um, oh, I don't know, um, a box of chocolates. She said she wanted the green eye of the little yellow god. And Carew got it for her. What she thought she was going to do with it, how she thought she could wear it, or where she was going to put it, I haven't the vaguest idea. <laughs> They called him Mad Carew. Oh, he wasn't mad. A trifle impulsive, perhaps, but you... You can't call a fellow mad for writing rude words on government house. <laughs> I've wanted to do it myself many a time. We all hated the governor's wife. Ugly old bag. <laughs> Too bad about Carew. He had a great future in the army. Fine family. Educated at Eton. Used to row for Oxford. Oh, I'll miss the young scamp. I say, boy, boy, bring me a stinger, will you? Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's anacin. A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take anison, A-N-A-C-I-N, anison, in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for anison at any drug counter. <laughs> Bankhead. Oh, hello, Meredith, darling. Meredith Wilson. Well, how 
how are you this week, Meredith? Oh, I'm all right, Miss Bankhead. But that story Florence Desmond told about Lieutenant Carew, whew, that was really a pistol. <laughs> you like it? Oh, very sad. The same thing that happened to this feller happened to a feller back home, only his name wasn't Carew and uh, he wasn't a lieutenant. But he was cashiered out of the service. Oh, dear. Here we go again. Oh, he was in the Army. Well, not exactly. You see, he was cashiered out of the service station. He worked for a chain of service stations and wore a uniform and everything, but he was fired for running around with the cashier. Cashier, yes. Oh, it was all very sad. Not as sad as it is now, darling. <laughs> well, uh, it gets better as it goes along. Cat a bet? Well, sir, Miss Bankhead? <laughs> Let me just tell you about Betty. Uh, now, Mary, I... darling, please, please. One revolting story at a time. Uh, better yet, uh, let me put it this way. Why don't you play something for us, huh? Well, I'd love to. How about Zing Went the Strings of My Heart? Ah, sounds delightful, darling. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Meredith Wilson and the big show orchestra and chorus of the gay and enchanting interpretation of a memorable popular hit song, Zing Went the Strings of My Heart. <laughs> And right now on The Big Show, we want to tell you about the biggest show in town coming your way this Saturday, January 20th. It's the premiere showing of the new 1951 Buick at your nearest Buick dealers. Yes, the car everybody's been waiting for is coming this Saturday. A new all-star lineup of 1951 Buicks. Make a date to see how Buick's done it again in beauty, in style, in design, and in performance. You'll see new Buick features, new Buick smartness, a new and even more distinctive Buick look.
front to rear, top to tires. The new 51 Buick is made for thrills, excitement, and distinction. Remember the date, this Saturday, January 20th. The new 51 Buick at your nearest Buick dealers. around here. I'm Martha Ray. <laughs> I am the MC around here. Excuse me. Oh, Uncle Milty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I didn't recognize you in that costume. I am not Uncle Milty, whoever she is. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I should have known. You're Milty's mother. <laughs> Pa, I could kill myself. May I watch? <laughs> Look here, darling, and I use the word darling because they won't let me use the word I'd like to use. <laughs> I am not Uncle Milty. I am not Uncle Milty's mother. I am Uncle Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> You're Tallulah Bankhead? Oh, knock it off, kid. You're flipping your lid, old girl. <laughs> you know, I've been listening to this show... And I know what this Tallulah looks like. She's about eight feet tall, <laughs> weighs 525 pounds, and is 95 years old. <laughs> I will tell you now, my dear, coldly and dispassionately, that I am Tallulah Bankhead. Well, I ask you now, coldly and dis... Uh, whatever you said. You got rocks in your head, old girl. How can I make this idiot, believe me? Uh, <laughs> here, listen to this. I'll be seeing in all the old familiar places. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> without marriage, <nervous>, too. <laughs> and now, who am I? Carmen Lamardo. <laughs> Will you please look at me calmly and try to figure out who I am? Well, the way it sounds every week. The little bank is as eight feet tall, weighs 525 pounds, is 95 years old, and... Uh... What do you know you are, Tallulah Bankhead? <laughs> <laughs> You're not sore or anything, are you? Oh, of course not, darling. It's, it's so reassuring to know that in half an hour, I'll never have to see you again. <laughs> oh, well, she was, don't get mad. At least not for a half hour. You know, I came to see you because I know you can help me. You see, now, you're a dame with class. And me, uh, I'm a dame. <laughs> but I'm tired of running around with the kind of men I've been going out with. I'd like to go out with the kind of guys you go out with. Those high-class bums. <laughs> Can you tell me what I should do to, to better myself? Well, it, it's the little things that count. Yes. Well, most men go out with me because of my brain. You see, it's the little things that count. <laughs> to travel with a higher type crumb. You know, like a, like a manager of an A.M.P. <laughs> or a, a boss painter. Or a Louis Calhern. Oh, you mean an old high class boss. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it is. I meet plenty of vacuum cleaner salesmen. But how do you get to meet Hoover? <laughs> That's a very funny joke. <laughs> Would you settle for Dewey? Why should I? Nobody else did. <laughs> Out of the mouth is a babe. <laughs> Are you kidding? With this mouth? <laughs> you know, I've got a big problem for a girl of my sex. I've got to get my hooks into... <laughs> you see, I've got to get my hooks into a real classy type creep. Well, then I'll have... <laughs> I think I'll have to introduce you to Louis Calhoun. Oh, it'll be love at first sight. Me married to Louis Calhoun. I can see it now. Louis Calhoun and me, sharing the same laundry chute. <laughs> well, look, Miss Ray, why don't you sing and get whatever is bothering you out of your system? What would you like to sing, darling? <laughs> that old black magic. Well, that's the only way you'll ever get to marry Louis Calhoun, darling. Black magic. She's a dog. <laughs> Black 
that magic has me in its spell. That old black magic that I feel so well. As I see fingers up and down my spine. The same old witchcraft when you are. Like a leaf that's caught in the tide. I should stay away, but what can I do? I hear your name. Oh, I'm all a flame, a flame with a burning fire. For you're the lover that I have waited for. The maze that fate and me created for. Every time your lips meet mine, baby, down and down I go. All around I go in a spin. Love in the skin I'm in Under that old black magic Called love Martha, darling, that was divine. Now, let's see, darlings. Um, um, I better give uh, the darling little stations all over the country a break, huh? Lola? Yes, Jack Carter? Uh, watch with the station break bit. The station break bit? Well, let me put it this way. I'd like to ring your chimes. Darling, ask me anything, but my chimes I give to no man. Oh, <laughs> Before you ring your chimes, I'd like to mention that this portion of the program was brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by your local Buick dealer, who introduces the new 1951 Buick this coming Saturday, January 20th. Don't miss seeing the new 51 Buick. Well, Ed, if you can be a name dropper, so can I. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> This is the big show, and here is Tallulah Bankhead. Tonight on Broadway, darlings, there's a fine revival of a comedy playing for capacity. It is that renowned classic by George S. Kaufman and Edna Ferber called The Royal Family. Tonight we're bringing you a scene from the play in which I portray a member of a famed theatrical family, Julie Cavendish to be exact, and Louis Calhoun plays the role of my brilliant but incorrigible brother, Tony. So, the curtain is up, and you meet some of the members of the royal family. 
good heavens, Miss Julie. You're dripping wet. Take your shoes off. I'll get your warm you. Oh, thank you, Della. Where is he? Where is he, my brother Tony? Roaming the house like a caged lion. Miss Julie, your coat is ripped. The entire population of New York is standing on our doorstep, howling for a glimpse of America's foremost screen lover. In the meantime, they take what fortune sends. And it just so happens to be me. Here now, slip these on. Oh, good, Julie. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, what a day this has been. I had to get out of the corner. You don't dare drive up. Oh, my dear Della. You should try playing a matinee audience made up entirely of sea lions. They came in wet to the knees and never did dry off. They spent the first act taking galoshes off and the last act putting them on. <laughs> you know, my dear, I looked out once during the last act and couldn't see a face. And coughing, coughing. I think they had a cheerleader. <laughs> Lincoln couldn't have held them with the Gettysburg address. Oh, there, there you are, Julie. Did you get my passport? A peg on your public, Tony. I'm a battered wreck. Julie, the passport. Have you got the passport? No, oh, shut up, Tony. I'm not over my matinee. Dinner at the usual time, Miss Julie. No, 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 no. Hold it a while, Della, please. Mr. Gilbert Marshall phone. Oh, oh, darling. Oh, dear, I forgot to call him. He said he'd call here. Oh, good, good. The La Bame dress shop says your dress is all ready. Oh, dress be hanged. My boat sails at midnight. What have you done about my passport? Tony, my love, your distinguished producer, Oscar Wolf, is getting it. Oh, he is? Why didn't you say so? Thank heaven. He's been pulling all sorts of wires. He's been in and out of my dressing room all afternoon. Everybody's been in and out of my dressing room all afternoon. Compared to my dressing room, Grand Central Station was a rustic retreat. <laughs> Reporters and process servers and subs. Listen, Julie, how soon will Wolf get here? Oh, I don't know. Oh, right away. And he's bringing the money for you, too. They kept your reservations, and I paid for it. By the way, you neglected to tell me that you were roughing it across in the Royal Suite. I can't travel as a stowaway. How a battleship for all I care. But remember, I'm a working girl. What do you do with all your money anyway? You go out to Hollywood with a billion-dollar contract, and you buy a pink plaster palace for one hundred and fifty thousand, and I sort her for Sheeny for twenty thousand, a spawn of Suiza for twenty-five, a camp in the Sierras for another fifty. God, you were sunk a quarter of a million dollars before they ever rolled a camera on you, and as soon as they start to take a picture. You knock out the director and quit. No, oh, it'll blow over in a month. That's why I want to get away. Why, why, why do you have to go to Europe? What are you going to do when you get there? I am going to bathe in the pure beauty of Athens. I want to lose myself in the black forest of Bavaria. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. Any place where it rains all the time. All right, brother. Go to Pango Pango. But attend your own hospital. What's that? Somebody at the door? Keep calm, keep calm. They can't get up here. Look here, do you think I'd better put some furniture against the front door? Well, you have to go out sometime, won't you? They can't keep back the Queen Mary up to our house. No, oh, I'll get out all right when the time comes. Well, what is it? What is it, Della? Oh, one of them reporters tried to get up in the service elevator. But they got him. <sighs> that crowd's still standing around down there in the wet snow. There's certainly is a mob of them, Miss Julie. <sighs> Looks like a bigger crowd than the time Mr. Tony got his first divorce. Don't tell our faithful retainers to man the battlements. Drop fire on them if they try to storm. Yes, sir. I don't have much time, Julie. I'll have to get aboard early if I'm to dodge the crowd. About that passport. Who says you have to get on a boat? Maybe I am naive. A million reasons. I feel like it. I want to get so far from Hollywood and sunshine. I, I never want to hear camera again. Or stage either, for that matter. You can have it. I'm through. Oh, through. You've been saying that ever since you played little Lord Fauntleroy. Oh, but I mean it this time. That's why I'm going abroad. Give me two years in Munich with my violin under Russia, and I'll show you what the stage means to me. I can be a great musician. Or I may go away into India and study Hindu philosophy. It's the only real thing in the world. You wear just one garment, you know. A long white robe. And that'll be restful. The stage. I'd rather spend ten minutes in the cathedral at Chartres. I don't give a... What are all these letters? They've been here all day. What are they? Stop shouting. It's your bell! Well, why didn't you say so? Throw it in the furnace. Look, look, brother mine. You're not fooling me about why you're going to your cathedral 
and violins and long white garments. It's this woman you're running away from. Else, why was she on the same train with you? Oh, I'm not afraid of her. I gave her the slip in Chicago. Just the same. That's why you're running away. Now, don't lie to me, Tony Cavendish. Well, suppose I am. I, only I'm not afraid of her. Then what is it? It's that blankety-blank process server she's got after me. Which blankety-blank process server? The breach of promise suit. Breach of promise? Yes, $200,000. That's why I've got to stay cooped up here. You don't think I'm afraid of reporters, do you? But if they ever clap that paper on me, I can't say you. 200000 for breach of promise. Assault and battery on his director. Probably another 100000 And breaking your contract with the picture company, I guess a half a million will cover it. Well, that's worth it. Yeah, that sunshine. What did you ever promise this movie actress that's worth $200,000? What? Oh, she claims to have some letters. I, I, I didn't want her in the first place. She was that director's girl. That, that's why he got sore. <laughs> That's the process server. I'll get it. Who is there? Miss Cavendish in. This is Gilbert Marsh. Oh, Gil, let him in, Gil, let him in. Gil, darling. Oh, is this a time to entertain people? Oh, uh, Gil, it's so wonderful to see you. There's something wrong, Julie. Oh. Can I help? All those people on the street. Are... Oh, everything's happening, darling. Oh, but just, just family, Gil. Oh, you're still sane, aren't you? Aren't you? And solid and reliable and sure. I hope so. Oh, how nice. And I was going to be so ravishing on our first meeting... I had it all planned, darling. Oh, let me make an entrance, will you? I'll say, is it really you, Gil? And after all these years, you'll say... Answer the phone! You guards, excuse me, Gil. Hello. Hello. Oh, Oscar, yes, dear. Yes, 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 I'm sure you did, but... Who is it? Who is it? What's wrong? Oh, Oscar, well, of course, yes, we can't. Well, there's no use, darling. There's nothing to, to be... Yes, I know it is. Yes, I know. Well, I'm even very shocked to see Yes, I am. Well, don't worry. I'll give a good performance. Well? Well, that was Oscar Wolf. Now, Tony, now, Tony, I don't want you to hit the ceiling. He hasn't got my passport! It is not so vital. You haven't done anything so terrible. You don't know what you're talking about. You'll find out if it's vital. I guess if this woman... Oh, don't be so childish, Tony. What can she do to you? You talk like somebody in a melodrama. Now, now, calm down and shut up! Oh, oh, Gil, this is my brother, Tony. What can she do to me? I'll tell you what she can do to me. Tony, 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 will you be quiet? This is uh, Mr. Gilbert Marshall. Uh, uh, Gil, my brother, Tony. Charmed. What the devil kind of jam do you think I'm in anyway? What do you think I blew all the way from California for? The ride? I've got to get out of here, I tell you. That woman's in town by this time. Do you know what that means? You don't know that polka. Why, I've seen her pick up a, a, a thing like this ashtray here, only bigger and heavier. She's a killer. She'll do anything. She'd just as soon shoot us. Look at you. She's a pole, you know. She's cuckoo about me, and she knows I'm through with her. Now, if you don't want to do anything to help me, why, all right. You're a devil of a sister. I'm only your brother. Why should you bother about me? But I'm telling you now, if they get me, I'll be all over the front page, and so will you and the whole blasted family. Now, if that's what you want, believe me, that's what you're going to get. What am I doing with this ashtray? There. Pleased to have met you, Mr. Gilson. Wait. Wait, what's this about a passport? Darling, Tony must get a passport. He can't sail for Europe. I'll get that passport. Get you an emergency one. I've got friends downtown. When? Have it sent down to the Queen Mary. Say, 20 minutes. Better still, I'll take you down myself and smuggle you aboard. Oh, Gil, darling, you're a rock. Good man. We could use a chap like this in the family. Della, Della, where are you? Get my stuff together. We're on our way. Coming, Mr. Tony. Goodbye, Gil, darling. Bless you. Hurry back, won't you? Goodbye, Tony. Get three cabs exactly all right. Carry the stuff out. Put it in the third cab. Gilson, we'll take the first. All set? The end of a perfect day. Thank heaven. Oh, Tony, Tony. Now, don't charter a tug and come back. That's all I ask. Now, take care of your sinus. Keep out of Russia. But why you have to go to your bow? Never mind, never mind, darling. Goodbye, goodbye. Open the door. Get ready to attack. This is the big breakthrough. They can't stop us now. One, two, three. Charge! Remember, it's the guaranteed trust. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, brother. Goodbye, brother. Oh, brother, for the peace and quiet of Mesa's basement. <laughs> well, you're very kind, darling. We share your applause with two fine performers, Martin Blaine as Gill and Miss Nell Harrison as Della. As for you, Louis Calhoun, I can only say I wish we could do a play together on Broadway. To be in a play with you would be my pleasure, my sweet. The theater is supposed to be an invalid, but with performers like you, 
It could easily be cured. Sweetie. You could cure it single-handed, sugar. Hey, Jimmy, get a load of those two sugar-cured hams. <laughs> yeah, Martha, there's something going on here that ain't kosher. <laughs> Let you and me show them how to really do some acting. Oh, it'll be my pleasure, my sweat. Uh, sweet. <laughs> sweet. We can beat them playing the royal family and give them spades. In fact, we'll play it in spades. We'll call it the royal flush. <laughs> Can't it be my sister, Miss Ray? Hey, Goomba, can't we be more than just sisters? How about brothers? <laughs> Meredith, uh, some acting music, if you please. <laughs> Julie, I've got to get out of town. Where's my passport? <laughs> How am I going to get out of town without my passport? <laughs> You said you was going to get me a, a passport. I got two in passport, and I'm still waiting to get the other one. What am I going to do with two passports? I only need one. Well, they're having trouble with your picture on the passport. They couldn't get that nose on only one. All of a sudden, I need two passports. I'm in a double jalopy. I've got to get out of town, Julie. Where are you going, Tony? <laughs> Any place where it rains all the time. Oh, you're going back to Hollywood, California, John. No, I can't go back to Hollywood. I promised that girl a mink coat, but I got her a muskrat break cake. <laughs> now she's trying to pin the rap on me. Only one of the greatest actresses dead or alive. And I wish she were. None other than the one and only Tulula Bonkhead. She's an actress? <laughs> what an actress. What an actress. You don't like her because once she gave you a hot foot. Why, she can't hold a match to me. She did. <laughs> Why, when I played Juliet, the rafters shook. And believe me, it ain't easy to play Juliet and run up and shake the rafters at the same time. <laughs> I gotta get out of town. Where's my passport? I gotta get out of town. Where are you going, Tony? I'm gonna bathe the pure beauty in Athens. Jimmy, come on, that's wrong. It's I'm going to bathe in the pure beauty of Athens. You do what you want, and I'll do what I want. I got to get out of town. Where's my passport? I got to get out of town. I'll manage it for all I care. You went to Hollywood with a million dollar contract. And you got yourself plastered in a pink palace that cost 150000 You spent 50000 for a car. A French do do do. A Spanish pro. A Buick. What you need like a hole in the hood. <laughs> hole in the hood. Bye. Okay. If you won't get me a passport, I'm leaving anyway. I'll go where this Tallulah dame will never find me. Farewell, Julie. Where are you going, Tony? There's a little picture theater around the corner. She'll never go there. They're showing all about Eve. <laughs> Farewell, Julie. Farewell. Farewell, brother. Oh, brother, for the peace and quiet of Macy's window. <laughs> Martha and Jimmy, the royal family abdicate in your honor. You were both really... Excuse me, uh, uh, may I speak to you a moment, Miss Bankhead? Why, of course, Mr. Carter, but why the formality? What did you want to talk about, Jack? That's it, Jack. I think I can save you a lot of Jack on this show. You see, Florence Desmond and I have been figuring it out. All the stars you have on this big show. Why, the actor's salaries alone must run into five figures. Uh, not forgetting mine, darling. Okay, seven with your figure. I asked for that. You asked for that figure? Uh, isn't he dull? 
No, what I'm trying to say, Tallulah, is that Florence, Desmond, and I can do this whole show by ourselves. Why, we can be every big star you ever had in these shows. Just Florence and I. It'll save you a lot of money. Oh, you mean just the three of us will do the big show? Just the two of us. Florence and I. She's a better Tallulah than the original. Much better. <clears throat> could, uh... <laughs> could, uh, we do a sample for you? If you don't, we'll be five minutes short. Go ahead, John. <laughs> Okay, Tallulah Desmond, you're on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your hostess, the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Desmond. Well, darling. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, darlings. I call you all darlings because you are darlings, darlings. <laughs> <laughs> The most revolting, nauseating story. Don't you dare to mention her name on this program. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Harold Square. Why can't that orchestra stay on key? Lord. You've been darling, darling. Uh, isn't this weird? Oh, excuse me, Tallulah. Why, darling? It's Fred Allen Carter, darling. Thank you, one and none. <laughs> oh, Fred, that is insanely divine. Yes, Tallulah, and now that you mention it, Florida is cold. Why, it was so cold down there, when I went to sleep at night, I had to slip in between two pieces of hot pastrami. <laughs> And, darlings, here is Meredith Wilson Carter and a teensy-weeny tiny show orchestra and chorus in one of Meredith's teensy-weeny tiny arrangements of Dodd and Earth. Oh. <laughs> that was divine, Meredith, darling. Well, sir, now here is Marlene Dietrich Desmond. Hello, Tallulah, darling. Falling in love again. Never wanted to, what am I to do? I can't help it. <laughs> Wherever I go, men follow me, and why not? I make such good Wiener schnitzel. There is his way. Okay, Tallulah. Edwin Carter. Oh, listen, Tallulah. Tonight I would like to explain the story of the opera Carmen, you know. But, Ed... <laughs> Ed, I I'm going to sing. Give my regards... Oh, that's to enough, that's enough. I'll explain it up to there. Now, you see, Carmen is working in a cigar factory. Oh, this is wonderful, you know. <laughs> now, she's wrapping cigars, and one day she meets a fellow named Guy. Now, Guy and Carmen decide to become brothers, you see. So later they organize an orchestra, which is known as a cigar band. <laughs> well, look who's here. Hildegard Desmond, the incomparable. Je ne sais pas what to do. Darling, je vous aime beaucoup. I love you, dear. I do, I do. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, and here's Vaughn Monroe Carter. <laughs> Racing with a goon. I up in your father's balloon. <laughs> Thank you, Vaughn Monroe Carter, darling. And now... Hello, salute. How's every little ink kid in do? I wanted to do this Oh, one. no, no, no. I do Durante. I said, I'll do this, this one. This is sabotage. Here, I'll do it, Jack. Chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter me. Hey, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya. Chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat. What a lyric. I'm practically no old coward. Chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat, chitter beat. Wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. Stop the mimic, stop the mimic. I'm the real Jimmy Durante. What is this, a man and woman imitating Durante? An imposter and an impostatress. <laughs> uh, I, I 
think it's charming, Jimmy. Paula, are you the real Tallulah Bankhead? I am the only Tallulah Bankhead. Now, Jimmy, and I think it's really wonderful for people to imitate you. There's room in this world for more than one Durante. You know, darling, this might be a better world for all of us to live in. If everybody was as warm and as sweet and as lovable as you. If the world were full of Durantes, what a wonderful world it would be. If the world were full of Durantes, what a wonderful world it would be. Every day would be sunny. Life would really bubble. So much laughter. There'd be no room for trouble If I were, were full of you and Think of all the sights we'd see A football game at the Tournament of Roses Imagine one football and 90,000 noses If I were, were full of you and What a wonderful world it would be Thanks, Tula And may I return the compliment and say If the world were full of Tallulahs what a wonderful place it would be. Every heart in a man would be tripping like a hammer. Their eyes would pop just from seeing so much glamour. If the world were full of Tallulahs, I want predictable the women would be. I can picture each man just as nervous as a Stalin. She'd kiss him and say, you're for me, you darling, darling. If the world were full of Tallulahs, what a wonderful world it would be. The Giants would win the pennant. And I'm not trying to be a smarty, and Republicans would all join the Democratic Party if the world were full of Tallulahs. What a baritone world. What an effervescent world. What a wonderful world it would be. Would be if the world were only full of We hope, you'll, uh, we hope you'll be with us next week when our stars will be Fred Allen, Eddie Cantor, Portland Hoffer, Judy Holliday, Gypsy Rose Lee, Vaughn Monroe, Patrice Munsell, and, of course, Meredith Wilson and the Big Show Orchestra and Chorus. And until then, may the good Lord bless and keep you. Well, the near are far away. Friends... May you find that long-awaited golden day today. Louis? May your troubles all be small ones and your fortune ten times ten, Lawrence. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again, Martha. May you walk with sunlight shining and a bluebird in every tree. Jack? May there be a silver lining back of every cloud you see. Jimmy? Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow. Never mind what might have been. May the good Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow. Never mind what might have been. May the good Lord bless and keep you Good night, darling. Listen to the big show next week at the same time when our guests will be Fred Allen, Eddie Kander, Portland Hoffa, Judy Halliday, Gypsy Rose Lee, Vaughn Monroe, Patrice Munsell, Meredith Wilson, and the big show orchestra and chorus. And of course, as always, the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. The big show is directed and produced by D. Engelbach. And written by Goodman Ace, Selma Diamond, George Foster, Mort Green, and Frank Wilson.
This... This is NBC, the national broadcast.